Okay, so today we are going to be doing roses. I had a question about roses and I figured I'd just go ahead and do it. Um, really, roses are, there's two types. There's the Sailor Jerry tattoo type, which is pretty easy. If you're doing tattoo looking stuff, it's real basic. It doesn't need a whole hell of a lot of detail. You can, uh, but it doesn't really need it to look great. Whenever you're doing um, real roses, parts of a Sheridan, or parts of a floral carving, something that you want a whole bunch of detail, that's kind of what we're going to be looking at today. I hope you enjoy and please subscribe. Thank you. Bye. Back so it doesn't stretch over much. And I've got my pattern just on some tracing film. We're going to lay it on here, get it where we want it. Uh, your patterns. This one I just have on my computer. Uh, you won't see a lot of books if you ever come to my shop. The reason being is I keep everything on my computer. I mean everything. It's just a lot easier for me. And if you want something, you can just go to it and print it out. Or go to it and look at it on the computer itself instead of having to dig through a whole bunch of books and patterns. I did my pattern in pencil and this way whenever I use a pen to run over it and transfer it I can see on the pattern what I've hit and what I've missed. If you do it in black pen and then go over it in black pen you're on the risk of missing stuff. And these are basic, just little guide lines. Whenever I get in here with the swivel knife, it's going to be a, there will be a bit different stuff that I'll go through and do. Just because I like how it looks. Alright. So that's how it looks whenever you've done it just about right. Now that we've got it traced down, pull your tracing film off. And this is why I do it on two sides. There's two reasons. They, uh, it keeps it from stretching too much and it lets you check it without removing the sheet to where you'll have to line it all the way up. All right, so we're done with that pattern. Take this extra tape off. Now there's your roses. Let's see. I'm gonna zoom in real quick so you can see what they're supposed to look like. You can see all the little lines on there. So let's zoom out. Now I'm going to go through and do my swivel knife cuts. And remember, your swivel knife has to be sharp. It has to be nice and sharp, and the blade needs to be polished correctly. If you need to figure out how to do that, you can go and look through my videos there's one on sharpening and care of your leather knives your swivel knives your cutting knives just about all of them uh, and I'll show you how to actually take care of them all right another thing you need to check I, I have to check all the time is look at the back of your hands and make sure there's no dye or anything sitting on them because that's the worst thing ever you set your hand down here start doing your cuts lift your hand up there's this big old blob of blue or black right there or brown
All right, so we've got our swivel knife cuts done. It's a little bit dry for me right now, so, and here's the thing. Most books tell you to dunk the piece in the water and leave it there for a few seconds and then pull it out. Don't do that. You can do that if you're doing huge pieces like big saddles and stuff, that's fine because by the time it starts to dry out, you've probably started tooling and it has a higher water content and it doesn't dry out as fast. For stuff like what I do, you know, backpacks, pads, stuff like that, use a spray. All right, so first things first, I've got my leather, I've got it cased, I've got it taped on the back. You tape it on the back so it doesn't stretch over much. And I've got my pattern just on some, it's starting to return to its natural color a little bit. This is about the right time to start your tooling. If you start before this, if you spray the water on and there's a bunch of water on the piece and it hasn't all soaked in and hasn't all started to turn back its regular color, it's going to smush all over the place. It's going to look like a soggy mess. So you want to wait until it starts to return. Now I'm going to start with this pair shader. It's a Craftool P209. It's the bigger vertical lined pair shader and this is just to do my big areas. You just want to start right in here, kind of lean it back a bit, come right up to this edge. See, that gives it a little bit of depth right there. to all of the pedals. I use this one, the P209, and then this one, the P215. It's a smaller version of the big one. Go through and do all your pedals first. Here in the center it's kind of hard unless you have really tiny tools. I don't have the tiny pear shaders to do this. I don't really ever bother. So now we've got our pear shading on those pedals done. And in the middle it's not going to really matter. Your beveler is going to push everything down. Over here you're going to start in the center of this flower and in the center of this flower right here these are kind of like tubes you don't want to put the pear shader on. So we've got our beveling done and you know roses are actually one of the more pain in the ass things to do and everyone's just a bit different uh, I'm gonna go through and start all my detail work we're going to start with our Vayner. This is a Craft Tool Pro V2795. And yes, I do call it Mr. Squibbles. And if you don't like it, too damn bad. So we're going to vein the leaves. And this just helps give us some more detail. You don't use a thumbprint on rose leaves because they don't look like that. Go look at roses. Do they actually, do their leaves go through and freaking curve around a lot or no? They don't. So we're gonna go through, we're gonna just give it some 
veins because all leaves have veins. and looking for rose tooling videos and there's not many at all and I'm curious as to why if anyone has an answer please tell me because I'm curious and the quality of most of the videos other than you know like Don Gonzalez has great videos Bruce Cheney, Jim Linnell they have great videos but everyone else seems to just like tool it with background music and not explain anything. And yeah, I understand that a bit. The, this is valuable information. I do offer classes one on one, one on 30, stuff like that. I've got a class coming up. July the 21st in Austin at the Tandy 108 location for advanced holster making. If anyone wants to join me there, cool. If not, it's probably already pretty much booked out. Leaves out. Now here's something you do with rose leaves that you don't really do with other stuff and it helps with uh, the detail and makes them look better. Take your swivel knife and just tip little cuts on the edge. And you want to kind of wiggle your knife as you do it to widen them. And if you ever looked at a rose leaf, you know that they have little tips on them on the edge of the leaf and it just makes them look a lot better they're not a straight line and it's easier to do it like this than to take your beveler and try to do it with that because your beveler pushes down one side and on a rose leaf they don't have that And as you can see, I'm just putting it in and twisting it just a hair. Always aiming at the bottom. Doing this, make sure that your um, knife overlaps the edge a bit. Don't, if you look right here, I accidentally came in from the edge a bit. Don't do that because you don't get that feathered look quite right. So, on decorative cuts on roses, they can be a pain in the ass to make it look right. And I'm not all that great at the decorative cuts on the roses. I kind of usually try to um, follow the line a little bit it just seems to give it a bit more definition and see I fucked that one up makes the petal seem to be deeper on the rounded areas I kinda just do a round little tiny cut and try to keep them close to the edge because that's where the petal would actually roll up a little bit and like on this petal you can see that he's got a fold in him so right here just give it that and that and it just gives it a little bit more definition a little bit more pop it 
see now it's looking a lot more out of the leather. It doesn't look like it's down in there. It pops out some more. You get more of the 3D effect. You get a lot more of the 3D effect after you've dyed it and antiqued it. It'll start getting a lot more poppy. This is a Berry King. It's a, a holster molding tool. But let's just go through and smooth that line out a bit. My modeling spoon kind of broke on me. So I'm using this guy. And we just lay it out. Don't go in. Lay it flat against the leather almost. Another thing is over here on these beveling lines, if you have a good modeling spoon, you can make those even deeper and it makes it pop out even more. So, alrighty. So we're done with our tooling basically. Um, actually, I missed the spot. Background that real quick. Background right there. There we go. I'll dye it here in just a minute. And here's your close up. Alright, so I got ahead of myself just a bit. No big deal. I'm doing the dyeing right now. I've already done the background. I did that a saddle tan. It looks really dark right now because it's still wet. It will lighten up. Now, I'm using Angelus dyes. I prefer them. They give you... I prefer to dye stuff rather than paint it, actually. The reason being is dye sinks in and it doesn't fade, ever. It never fades. It'll stay the same color. It might lighten a little bit, but it's not like a paint where, you know, you paint it on and you rub it against something, you know, especially wallets and bookcases and actually everything other than like a picture that's gonna be framed and put on the wall. Uh, paint will rub off die won't. So I'm going through and right now I'm pitting on my coat of light rose and uh, let's get this on here and you can just with the light the first coat you know you work light to dark you don't work dark to light because you can't. You dye something red and then try to put a pink on it, it's going to stay red. If you start with the pink and put the red where you want it, then it's going to look right. So, we've got you dyed. And you know, on the centers, you can basically just slather them. Put as much dye as you want on them. It doesn't really matter because there's nothing for it to fade onto. But down here on the edges, you need to be a bit more careful. Try to make sure that you get it in to all the little nooks and crannies. Because once you seal it, you can't go back and redo it
Now you'll notice on the uh, die where you slather it on, you'll start to get this coppery color on it and that's normal for these alcohol based dyes. When you go through and oil it, it should uh, it should go through and uh, get rid of that coppery color. Don't spray water on it. Water will make it worse. And it's got the light green and the light rose on it. Come over here, get a different brush, one that's kind of small, a lot smaller. And I go through brushes like crazy. I don't bother really cleaning them out. They're not expensive enough. I don't buy really high-end brushes because they're just going to get ruined anyways. Especially oil dyes. I mean, like, I've got a box of brushes that are just for black and just for dark brown and just for saddle tan and whatever. That way I'm not ruining brushes. Dye so work's done. It has to dry now and drying takes a few hours and once it's dry it's going to lighten up a lot over here and it'll need two or three more coats of the brown just to make it make it look right but as you can see especially right in here you can see where it fades from the dark to the light and let's turn this slide away there you go now it's not all reflective alrighty okay so we've got it tooled we've got it dyed I've already oiled it and let it dry out and as you can see there's no coppery sheen to it at all because it's been oiled now we're going to clear coat it. I like these little spongy things. I get them from Walmart. They're $3 for a pack of like 40 of them. So I come through and I just kind of scrub it in at first. And that's to uh, just get it in everything. And I kind of just dribble it all over here. Work it all in. And you're going to do this two or three times. You want a really, really light coats, multiple light coats. You don't want a super thick, heavy coat. So we've got our clear coat on. I use Super Sheen for this. A few reasons. I don't like scrubbing my clear coat in. I really don't. I typically want to lay it down and let it dry. Whenever you scrub it in, you risk having little lines from the bristles or the little voids in the sponge and they tick me off real bad. If I see the little lines from a brush, it pisses me off big time. With the Super Sheen, you put it on and you let it sit and all of it will kind of just go where it needs to go. And it dries pretty flat. <coughs> so we'll go through and do two or three coats of the Super Sheen and then we'll antique it. And once it's antiqued, it's done. Uh, I typically antique just about everything that I carve. I think it looks better that way. You don't have to. You can stop right here now. But I'm going to antique it and I'm going to show you how to basically do that. Alrighty. Alright, 
so my clear coats have dried. I'm gonna go through and antique this. Um, my clear coats dry really fast because I cheat. I have a dryer that I use. Not an actual clothes dryer, but I, had a, I made one for drying out holsters and antique and everything. So I use Thieving's dark brown antique. And I cut it with tan coat. I go through and mix in a bunch of tan coat with it and make it kind of soupy, as you can see. And I do this because it makes it easier for me to get it in. Uh, some people use the saddle skirt remnants for this. They work really good. They also cost a lot and you can't use them over and over and over again. A foam brush, I can go through and put it in my shop washer. I have a washer for the shop that only gets shit that's been in the shop that has crap you know, like antique and clear coat on it. And I put my rags and everything and run them through there just like any garage basically. So we're going to come over and just kind of rub it all in. Now we take our rags and get the majority of it off. Fold the rag over. I try not to be wasteful. Spray some good distilled water on it. And just come in and scrub the rest of this out. And this section is really quick because antiquing doesn't take long. And there you go. It's all antiqued, ready to go. If you do use saddle remnants, Don Gonzalez has a really good video on using the antique, using the saddle, saddle skirting remnants. They do great, but I don't want to pay for them. Alright. Thanks for watching, and I hope you subscribe. Here's a view, and let's zoom in just a bit. That's just a basic rose pattern. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day. Bye.